Shabbat Shalom, Mishpatah. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, just thank y'all for being here. Uh, just for waiting here this morning, give me a brand new day. Today we're going to, as you can see, I don't know what's over there, but uh, I know it's over here. Um, we're looking at a soldier. And I, I already got a question actually. Who is this soldier right here? Is this Goliath? Is it Yahusha, who somehow is Jesus? Who is this right here? And actually, that's us. That warrior who has on his armor looks strong and mighty, like he's about to go in battle. That right there is how we should look. Today we're going to start in. Uh, those who have your Bibles, will you turn with me um, to the book of Joshua? chapter 6, and we will begin there. Uh, Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Going to commence at verse 1. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Those who have your Bibles. That she would 
where my mouth have you? Yes, I did study something have you? But everything changes when you come in the room. Everything changes have you? Yeah. When you when you come in, you decide to come in like a rushing wind have you? Yeah. Just like the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Everything changes. Hallelujah. Oh, have you? We yeah. thank you. We oh, praise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Just thank y'all for being here once again. I know so many people, so many friends that I thought I was going to, uh, thought I was going to walk their way, but all through my life, I noticed some things. Whenever maybe a friend did something uh, that wasn't right, they would get, uh, you know, they, they wouldn't get caught. Different things would happen, uh, just different behaviors that I saw growing up. And all my life, I've noticed that he has called me to a different calling. I wasn't able to get away with nothing. My parents will be honest. My, my friends, my friends, they can go do anything they want to do. Uh, I know a lot of people done a lot of things. But whenever I even dip and dabble in something, they see, you know, my parents, they come with a revelation. God to show them something in the dream. And they come to me and they start talking. They're like, oh, I saw this. I saw this about you. Or, you know, I'm starting to see this. And I'm like, what? I, can't, I couldn't do nothing. So from that from that time on, I knew that I could not run away from this this calling that God has on my life. And I remember when I was about thirteen or fourteen, I was praying for just the Holy Spirit to come and overshadow me and fill me. I was praying for it with the evidence of tongues. And when I got it, you know what He showed me? He He, he showed me what to pray about myself, so I won't stray away. I know so many people, so many young people who strayed away. You can't even be pure nowadays. Nowadays, you know, we'll, we'll be over here talking in our groups, and they'll be talking about their experiences, and it's almost like you feel weird to, to, to walk in purity. Like, like, I'm the odd one out. Like, I'm the odd one out. But it's because God has called me. He has called me to a different time. It's not going to be better than anybody else. It's that he, he, he taught me how to pray. He told me what to pray about myself when I was about 13, 14. Here's the prayer that he told me. Here, here's what he told me. So I was praying, and I was just... Like, yeah, please feel me. I, I want your spirit. This is, I want you to be my life. I was realizing, even at that age, 13, 14, that my life is not my own. I wasn't put on this earth to play sports. I wasn't put on this earth to make a ton of money. I was put on this earth, none other but to glorify the Most High. And I just thank God for realizing that at a very young age. I thank God for realizing that because I could have been anywhere. I'm smiling. I'm just thinking that I could have been anywhere. If it wasn't for him having mercy on me, it's not by my mind, it's not anything that I did, it's not that my mind was wired differently. It's literally he had came and he told me, look, if you really want to live for me, if you're serious about this, this is what I want you to pray. And here's what it was. It was, yeah, I don't matter what, I don't matter what I want in life. I want a lot of different things. I was to public school, I had all the friends in the world. I, I had everything that I wanted that, that a kid, that a teenager would have. And I was only going to go further. Next thing you know, you know, uh, you come to the age of adolescence and, and you get older and older and then you realize that your desires start to change. If, you're my, and if your mind is not transformed, then you're going to start desiring things that are not of him. Next thing you end up, you end up, you know, I'm sitting in the pews or, or it doesn't matter if you're a musician, whatever you're doing, I could be sitting up here. Next thing you know, because of my desires, I'll be further and further away. Next thing you know, I'm sitting in this room. Next thing you know, I'm way back there. Next thing you know, I'm out of the church. I have so many friends. Countless times. This happens all the time. But what I pray is it doesn't matter what I want in this life. It doesn't matter what I desire in this life. Please make my decisions, make my decisions just like a, like a straight path to where I cannot choose anything else because you literally lay out everything right there for me. I want to go right, I want to go left, but you said the straight narrow path leads to eternal life. And that's what I prayed. So my prayer was, look, I want a lot of things and I was naming things. I'm like, I want to play sports, I'm pretty good, I want to go do this, I want to go do this, I want to make a whole whole bunch of money, you know, and, and, and it seems good, it, it seems good to, to the karma mind, because it wasn't just that, it's like, okay, well, you know, I, I want to provide for you and my family, you know, I want my parents to retire, see, it seems good, but see, even Satan can present himself as an angel of life, so as it seems good, it's not my, you know, I just want to be able to provide for my family, I know so many people who look like me, who are on the streets, who can't provide for their family, you know, they're over here selling drugs to provide, 
or, or maybe they just, their mind isn't there. I know so many people like that. So I'm like, you know what? This is honestly what I want. Like, yes, I want to go and, 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 and I want to have fun working. And at the time, my favorite thing in the whole wide world was to play basketball. That's all I did. So at this time, I'm telling them my desires. And I'm like, you know, nonetheless, just like Yahushua said, not my will, but your will be done. So that's what happened. I, I prayed the prayer, and I know it was a very, very, and, and I say this in a good way, it was a very, very dangerous prayer to pray. Yeah. Because I knew the Holy Spirit, He was upon me, and anything I said was going to come to pass at that moment. I just knew it. Yeah. It's kind of like how, yeah. how, how it came to so many. It's like, ask whatever you will. Whatever you will, I'll grant for you. I knew that if I would have asked, you know what, I really, want, I really want this. I'm going to say this thing. That maybe He would have allowed it to come to pass. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes what I'm just thanking you for. Thank you. That I didn't go in this path. Thank you that you didn't allow me to go this way. Because my mind is so different now. Just him being able to come, come over me and continue to teach me things through his word. My mind is so different now. If I would listen to my 13 or 14 year old self, where would I be right now? Yet you have so many people, yet you have movements right now that are allowing little kids, little 13 year olds to, to pick what gender they want to be. 13 year olds and 14 year olds shouldn't be making no decisions. Yeah, right. They shouldn't be making no decisions. Every decision should be made for them. Yes. But yeah, I pray the prayer. Yeah, whatever you want me to do in this life, I want to go your way. My biggest thing at the time, you know, I was a scared 13, 14 year old. They were showing me a whole bunch of end time movies and rapture and different things like that. So I, I was scared into it. And my biggest thing was, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want my actions to send me to a place where it will be eternal. We've been gnashing teeth. Bugs, he eating up your skin, man, he's eating up your skin, I don't want that. So as a 13, 14 year old, I'm like, okay, I want my actions to reflect you. Because I don't want to reflect anything else. You know, one time uh, the Pharisees were talking, and, and, and he said, your father's the devil. Why? Because their actions reflected that of Satan. I don't want my actions to do that. I don't want my actions to reflect anything else, but I'll be out. And this was growing up for me. This is, uh, I, I just realized that I cannot go uh, in any other way but the way that he has me to go. So I just thank y'all for it. That's just a brief yeah. testimony. Yeah. And if you young people inside here, if you really, really want y'all to feel you, if you really want the life that y'all has for me, by the way, the life he has for you is better than anything you can imagine. Right. I imagine a different life at 13, 14. I, I imagine that I'd be in a different place right now. I'm not in a better place. Uh, the, the, there's no way that what I would have picked back then would have been better than where I am now. Mentally, spiritually, I mean, God has just showed, he showed me a lot of things. There's a lot of routes I could have went, and those routes would have taken me to hell. That's just honest truth. Right. There's one way, one narrow way that he had for me. And it may be different from any of you, I'm not, I'm not saying that anything is bad. Uh, and unless he tells you specifically that this is not the way I want you to go, so I'm not, I'm not bashing any, uh, anyway. You know, it, I know some people. Uh, he has to go through areas like sports and things like that, and he has to go and minister. But that was not my way. And honestly, y'all knows our hearts. He knew my heart. He knew that me saying, "Oh, I'm going to go and I'm a minister to all the players and the coaches and everyone I meet because it's going to be travel, team travel, that's all I'm going to be doing this for like, the rest of my life." He knew that that wasn't really my intention. No, he knew I just really wanted to play it and do what I wanted to do, and I was going to add him to my plan. But how many know that you don't add God to, to your plan? You make your life his plan. Okay, everything that we do, believe it or not, I know we get caught up in a lot of things, but the job, the money, that is on the side. See, Paul, Paul was a tent maker. He made tents to get by. Yahushua Jesus, he was a carpenter. That's, you know, see? We don't have to worry about those things. If we're really following God the most high, we don't have to worry about anything like that in this life. Money and all that, we don't have to worry about that. Right, right. That shouldn't even be a worry. Mm -hmm. But see, the media and everything that, that we have in, in this world, they have pushed our minds to that. Oh, you need to make money, you need to continue to work, you need to do all this. Well, if you're doing God's will, he's going to take care of you. That's right. You know? That's right. David, David, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Yeah. What does that mean? If we live righteously. If we live righteous, righteously before you, if we live uprightly, if we live and walk in holiness, if we continue to read his word and walk in it, we don't have to worry about begging for bread. We don't have to worry about money or none of those things. Because if we, if we are doing his will, he will not, he will not, not take care of us. He will take care of us. That's right. 
You know, if he, if, if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, if he feeds the birds, if he feeds the birds, how much more will he be feeding and providing for us? Okay, so uh, I'm at Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. And it reads, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then Yah, typo, I put that Yah, but then Yah said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with his king and his fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse, and the army will go up, everyone straight in. Okay. One thing that I got from this passage is, first of all, the gates were secure. Okay? Yah wants us to know through this that he doesn't just give us anything, but he gives his people the best. If you walk uprightly, if you walk holy before God, he gives you the best. Also, doors that your adversaries think they have bolted shut, he knows how to open them. He knows how to open any door. See, you see that the walls were secure. They didn't let every night the enemy come and march around seven times. But anything that Yah says is ours, is ours. You know, I've heard a lot of it. When Yah says it's for you, it's for you. And then when we just add that to, you know, money and, and different things like that, this goes way deeper. See, this, this people, they had just came uh, from Egypt, a uh, land from where they were enslaved. Mm. This is way on a deeper level. This is them conquering a city. This is them possibly, you know, in, in their minds, maybe a soldier too having doubt. You know, this is a big city, secure, and, and they have mighty men. Right. How are we going to make it out of this? Mm. How, how are we going to do this? See, this is way on a deeper level. These, you, you know, this is war here. These, this is lives at stake here. How are we going to get through this city? Y'all said, march around. Seven days. Mm. Seven days you will march around. Another thing is the obedience factor. What if they were marching on five, six days? Shouting everything. Like, oh, you know that? That's not, you know, this, this is six days. I mean, no. <laughs> this is six days, and he's still walking around here. Seven days. March around with the trumpets. Sound the alarms. Mm. Tells you another thing about our people. Mm. How we sounded the alarms. We blew the Shafar. We were people who who were very courageous. If God told us to do something, we did it. But nowadays we have so many people. I, I, I don't know if he meant that. Yep. You know, we, we have so many people who even look at the book and they see a whole bunch of metaphors. Oh, I don't know if it really means that. It actually probably means this. You have so many people trying to uh, trying to play down the Bible. All right. That's not the way we're supposed to do. They could have easily, I'm sure they had some smart people, they could have easily made, made out some things in their mind, you know, tried to fix it, tried to manipulate Yah's word, and say, oh, you know, actually, he probably meant this. Maybe we don't need the trumpets and, and things this day. It's the second day, maybe not the third day. Oh, priest, you're tired, you're, you're so tired of blowing the shafar and walking around the whole entire day. Maybe y'all could sit out. No, they have to do exactly, exactly yeah. what Yah said to do. Yeah. We have to do that today. Yeah. So anything that Yah has already said is open. Any door that he already said is open, no man can shut. This is why Psalms 23, 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For his rod and his staff comforts him. These people, this, this army was comforted by God. There's no way that he was going to lead them somewhere where he did not, uh, somewhere where he was not going to protect them. Yeah. I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff will comfort you. Go on to say that he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yeah. All, of, all of this is going on, you know, and it's, it's, not just, it's not just on the job or anything like that. We are being attacked as people, as yeah. believers, as, as people who keep covenant. You know, uh, uh, since we talked about it earlier, how just us wanting to dive deeper in God and go deeper and, and keep what was originally and what still is his Sabbath day that is being attacked. Some of the people, oh, you don't, you don't have to do all that. Sunday school, you don't have to do all that. Now, you can praise and worship any day of the week. But the Sabbath, something said in stone, part of the Ten Commandments, something said in stone, part of the tour of the original teachings. That's not something we should do away with. Yeah, we should have the Sabbath. 
Yes. Paul, Peter, all, all the apostles, they kept the Sabbath. Believe in the book. Yes, he kept the Sabbath. He kept it over. And are we not supposed to be as he? Are we not supposed to? He, he came and he walked by example. He didn't come and walk by example and die just so that we can just so we can just manipulate the scripture. Right. And then next thing you know, we're, 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 we're worshiping every other day except the day he says to worship. That's right. right. We can worship any day. But he didn't die. He didn't come here and die, shed blood, so that we can just do what we want to do. Right. No, we, we are to live concretely by the word, especially, especially. The word that Yahusha gave. Yeah. Yeah. It's lawful to do good on the Shabbat. That's correct. He didn't say that he was doing away with, with, with the Shabbat or the Torah. Yeah. He said he came not to do away with the Torah, but to fulfill it. In other words, to fulfill is satisfied. Yeah. To walk in. To be That's complete. Right. Yeah. 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 So when we have the Torah and the teachings, you know, I, I can see anybody just looking and staring at the word like him and says, do this, do this, do this. But how much better is it to have a walking, living example? Yeah, I am. Yeah. He said, I am. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, the Bible also says that he is the word made flesh, which means he is the Torah. So yeah. he says, I yeah. am. And yeah. he came and he walked and, and he died and he shed his blood for us. We, that means we are to walk as he. We're not right. any different than he. That's he came right. and, 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 he, and he, wore, he wore his tassels. He wore his heat seats. Yes. 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 So why wouldn't we do the same? Why are we being penalized and, 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 and persecuted and prosecuted for, for just trying to walk as Yahushua walked? Yes. What is the harm in that? And if someone doesn't agree, they don't agree. But what is the harm in me reading the book, reading Yahushua's life, how he came, and, and, and how he addressed all the sins, and, and, and how he addressed the way of yeah. What is the harm in me just saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like Yahushua? We always sing that song, I'm going to be like Jesus. Do you really want to be like him? Because when it comes down to it, when you hear the word, and when you hear what, how he walks, how he addressed everything, and when you know that you are able to do the same, when you know that we are able to to keep the same thing, why, like, like, why is there so much tension surrounding that? There shouldn't be any tension surrounding that. And I would say anybody who has tension surrounding that, or, or, or because I'm wearing the seat seats, anybody has tension surrounding any of that. I'm not at fault. Because why? Because I got it from the word. Now, if we live by the word and abide by the word, he will abide in us. Yeah. If we bear fruit, he will continue to abide in us. He will continue to lead us and protect us. Especially in the days that we live in today. We live in so so many, like there's so many crazy things going on today. I'm gonna I'm gonna show them on the screen. I kinda got off track. But um yeah, okay. We're gonna move on, but just especially the day that we live in today, why not do everything that we possibly can for God? Come on. What if, what if, what if he comes and, and he says, you know, actually, these people over here that read my book and they they wrote it down and they studied it and they looked up how to keep it and they read the books about it and next thing you know, they start they start dressing different, they start walking different, mm -hmm. they start worshiping different. Yeah. What if he's going to come and say, you know what, these are my people. Mm -hmm. They did everything they can for you. You know, Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they who hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Yeah. 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 If you hunger and if you are thirsty for the righteousness, well, who is righteousness? There is but one who is righteousness. Who is righteousness? Who, who is holiness? The one who came and lived this life. The one who came and gave us the complete example. There is no contradiction. He is. That's why he said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. What does that mean? What does that mean? All the teachings, all, all that we have in what they call the so-called Old Testament, he is. He literally was. He came and he was. He did no sin. He committed no sin. Therefore, I'm going to follow him. Exactly how the word says to follow him. Because I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. When he comes on that faithful day, yeah. and when he's saying, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Yeah. Well, guess what? If, 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 if I came down, and if I wrote, uh, I'll call it an instruction manual, okay. and I know that I, I had a certain type, and I know that I did things on a certain day, and I'm coming, I'm looking for those people who are going to, who, who look like me, I'm going to go for the ones who are doing things on the same day, same attire, if, if, if Yahushua was wearing the he was, I'm going to look at them and say, oh yeah, you know what? 
He, he's a part of me. I, I know him. Yeah. I've come and, and I'm driving around looking, looking, looking for Sabbath keepers and I see some people and, and I see some people in the church and I see them worshiping God. They look like me. Yeah. That's just common sense. Well, but a lot of our people don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe that he's going to come down here and he's going to just accept anything, any type of living, right. any way of living. Something about David was he had been through so many battles and he started when he was about 14, 15 years old with the life. But his, his motto, if you will, or, or his mindset all, always remains, I fear God and I fear nothing else. I fear nothing else. He went and fought a, a, a 12, 15 cubic giant. I fear God and I fear nothing else. He feared no man. That's how we have to be. Especially these days, things are probably going to become, uh, things are going to get tight here. Things are going to become a, a, a very, is it not hard for us, I don't say hard for us, but there are already things that we saw with the COVID, that's a, that's a perfect example. Yeah. You're going to figure out who the, who the true worshipers are. Because when the Bible says, if, if, if any man be sick among you, let him come to the elders and, and let them lay hands on him. That doesn't change because there's a COVID virus. That doesn't change because anything can look. This type of modernized uh, Western Christianity, if you will, is so shallow. When, when did the word not say the word? Okay? If he said, let the elders come and lay hands upon you, then you will be healed, then how can we over here masking up and all? It just does not make sense to me. And you can't come and tell me, well, it's common sense. You know, he, he says, uh, don't test God. I've heard that. Someone, someone really told me that. Well, don't test God. You know, if they're saying there's a, there, there's a virus and it came out and it's killing thousands, millions of people, don't test God. No, I'm looking at his word. I'm searching his word. I'm, I'm asking y'all, y'all, what did you say in your word? How? Now, now see, a lot of times, see, we just want to, uh, we're, we're not provoking out all of us. But a lot of people, they like to read the Bible and they like to keep it shot. You know, oh, Joshua, he fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. That means any, anything in your life, you know, you know, if you just cry God, it's the walls are going to come tumbling down, things like that. And, and, and yes, that's true. That's what the Bible Why? Because it says the word. But we have to dig deeper, though. Yes, talk about it. Okay, because if we dig deeper and if we really know God, if we really know his word, then when something like COVID came, it would not have faced us. If anything, it would have got us thinking, you know, these are the end times. Right. These are the times where he is soon to come. Things are happening like this. They said you cannot go and you can't congregate any assemblies. You can't even go to church. How is that not real really doubt to us? We should know that. Yeah. And, when, and, 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 and when they give an example, no, I don't believe this is Mark and Beast, but when they give an example, this should raise the red flag. When they said, you, you can't go back to work without taking this vaccine. You need to take this vaccine or your kids, they can't go back to school without taking this vaccine. And they did say that. That is fact. They said that. That should have raised a couple red flags in our hands. Because if we were really reading the word and searching the word, there's just like there's no way you can miss it. There's no way you can miss it. It's right there. Okay, the word, the word says that these things will come to pass. And if it would even look similar to the mark of the beast, that should raise a red flag. Yes, yes. I do not want to take it. Nothing that I'm not supposed to take it in and figure out later. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. Yeah. We're going to move on though. So, what battles? Are we facing today? What battles are we facing today? Well, in order to achieve a high level of success in battle, it's imperative, imperative that one possesses two fundamental elements. And God, and God can write this down. If you like it, not. we we just family. So, um, number one, as you see, uh, fundamental one: acquire a profound understanding and knowledge of their adversary. Comprehend their strengths, weaknesses, and strategies. This effectively neutralizes or overcomes the opponent's advances. So we must study our enemy. We must know him. If you are searching this word, if you are reading, search the scriptures daily, we must know the enemy we face. And I have two examples. You know, one thing that I can take from sports, although I have already accepted that that will not be my life. I will not be going that way. Um, I, I plan for exercise and different things like that, you know, same shape. But that's not the way I have to But one thing that I did learn from sports that I can easily apply uh, to our lives is uh, studying the enemy. 
You know, when you go and you can ask for a football virtually, any, any sport essentially, uh, they go and they watch the film on their enemy. So let's go ahead and do it because we have film right here in the Word. If you search the scriptures, you have everything you need. See, we have so many commentaries in the Bible, and that's great, but a lot of them just build their own interpretations. I don't care what name they have, I don't care. But, oh, we recognize this person as Saint, whoever, and whoever. A lot of them are commentaries, and they made their own private interpretations, which the Bible says not to do anyway. But uh, let's just stay with the Bible. Okay. Let's, 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 let's go ahead and watch film straight from the book that he is. All right. All right. All right. Genesis 3 1 says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has Yah said, You shall not eat from the tree. Over your question, making doubt in her head. Talk about it. See, you know, I, I, I know a thing or two about psychology. Let me just tell you, Satan knew it. Satan knew a thing or two about psychology. He, he, he knows how to make some people question. But I'll show you a common factor in most of these examples. I'm going to read the same one. Now, when evening came, David or David arose from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathed in love, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman. At Second Samuel 11. Okay, the common factor in this is that he got alone. Isolation is Satan's game. Okay, he might not be able to get you when you're around people, but he will get you alone. This is one thing that our young men need to know. This is one thing that our young women especially need to know. When, 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 when these schemes come up, when, when Satan's schemes come up, when he attacks us with temptation, I heard a statistic, and it's probably higher now, but there are over 70 or 80 percent of men in the church addicted to pornography. This is something we don't talk about enough. In the church, we are not in community as much as we should be. We are not talking as much as we should be about these problems. About it. Isolation is the same. That's yeah. one of the biggest yeah. things. And you know what? I, I, I was able to think about it and draw a little conclusion. You know, one of the first things, uh, one, of, one of the first unclean things that happened in the Bible is Adam and Eve saw that they were naked. Mm. The eyes. That's one of the first things that happened in the Bible. That, that, that's how we were able to know that they were, that, that they had sinned. It's because of that fact. I'll be able to draw a conclusion and differently and go deeper into that in another message. Um, but I, I'll get back to that. But yes, that's why one of the biggest sins in this world, lust, fornication, adultery, one of the biggest things. Yeah. The the adult film industry makes billions and billions of dollars every single year that can be to different things. See, we say we care about the health care system and different things, and they want to come and get our money. Go get the money from the adult film. Go get the money. They got all the money. They got billions of dollars in there. I'm so tired of people, you know, outside the city coming and talking to me, trying to educate me on some matters, talking about, oh, yeah, you know, you should get this field, or, or we really need resources and money here. But they're not knocking at, at, the, at the door of the sin, at the door of the no from ministry, yes. who are taking the eyes of, of our people. Yes, yes. The eyes are the gateway to the heart. Yes. And, this, and this is what happens. I'll, I'll, I'll draw a conclusion in a second. We'll get back to that. Fundamental too. In addition to gaining comprehensive insight into the enemy's nature, it is equally indispensable to equip oneself with the correct tools and resources required to achieve victory in this confrontational scenario. Oh. What tools do we have and how do we fight? How do we fight Satan? Oh, I might be a little small. I'm sorry. I see some people. Yeah, I did ask you. That's all right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Let's, let's go to the scripture again. I'm, I'm going to get nothing but scripture. I have a little commentary the, the, just to show how this applies to us today and some different uh, uh, situations if you will to apply today. But we're just going to stay in the word. Okay. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11 says, Finally, be strengthened by God, by his vast strength. 11, verse 11, put on the whole armor of Yah so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. How do we stand against the tactics of the devil? You put on the whole armor of Yah. How do you do this? You pray. You pray before you do anything anymore. That's what you're supposed to do. When you pray. You know, I notice that on my worst days when I'm just irritated and and, and and when you know I'm trying to get when spirits are trying to attack me from every corner, I noticed the day that I didn't get up and I prayed. I didn't get up and, and the first thing I got to do was a, is, is, a, is I, I, I didn't fast that day. I didn't pray and fast that day. That's how we grow our spirits, our spiritual unity. To these things. These are diseases. These are demonic spirits, demonic entities attacking. 
through them, the spirit of lust, through the spirit of pride. You get up and all of a sudden you think you're high and mighty. When the breath that you have is not even your own. Those are the spirits are demonic spirits. You know, see, we address a lot of things as mental illnesses, but they're demonic spirits. There is no such thing, I don't believe, as as as, as one of the, as, as a mental illness. Okay? This is this is not this the it, it's way deeper than a lot of yes, it it is. It's way deeper than a lot of it. We find out in this but I'm gonna bring that spiritual a little bit later. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 2. We are to be transformed. Transformed every slave. Paul said, I die to flesh daily. That is, what, that is what we must do. We must die to this life. Okay? Because I'm not going to lie to y'all. I, I had a growth spurt since 13, 14. Next thing, next thing you know, I'm able to touch him and, and don't, this, 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 this is going to happen. But, um, you know, next thing you know, I'm like, hold up. Maybe sports need to work again. There, there's times when I think that. There's times when I think, hmm, maybe I can get back up there. Or, you know, I miss some coaches text me like, hey, you know, you could you could come start in JUCO. That's community college. You know, because anybody can get a community college. Maybe, maybe, you know, yes. <laughs> but then, you, know, you, could, you could come start playing in JUCO and work your way up. And if you really live as you say you are, I guess what, you'll, you'll go ahead and you go to that university level. And then, you know what, next thing you know, you, you go to that FIFA pro level, you know, where, where you play against, uh, against different leagues and stuff like that. Where you know, there's different adult leagues that, that you can simply get in, it doesn't matter what shape you're in, you can get any adult league. So, yes, there are times, and this is just an example of one of my biggest temptations, because I love, I still love sports to this day. I just know that in order for God to work through me, in order for my life to really be here, see, we, we see that, we see that song, my life is my mine. Is it true though? Is it true? And if it's really, really true, then we would gain our desires to Him. See, our desires need to, need to be given over to Him. You know, and sometimes I think of God because I talk to Him frequently, and not, not, not every single time I'm like, oh yeah, just thank you. Not every time it's a prayer of adoration, but sometimes I'm really just talking like, yeah, this desire is coming up. Yeah. It's sometimes it's almost like he's a therapist. And then he takes me to the Word, and, and he tells me how to alleviate this stress in my life from this desire. And, 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 and then I look at the Word, and, and, and it says how his thoughts are not our thoughts. These are his desires, uh, our desires. And I'm like, okay, well, this needs to change because, yeah, if I'm going to look like you, if I'm going to walk how you walk, my desire got to change. Because I'm not just going to go through the motions and invite everybody to come to church, play the piano, be smiling, and, and act like I miss the music, but I don't really desire to be there. I just want to be myself. I would never do That is a very dangerous place to be in. I've heard too many stories. I've seen how told me too many stories about these musicians going out to church and, and getting killed. And, and, and next thing you know, some congregation finds them on their computer. Or next thing you know, you just you realize and people find out that their life was not right. You could get up here and you could you, you could play really good and, and you could have a whole all this talent, but your life could not line up to the word. That's just how it is. Talk about and sadly it. these churches see musicians, so they take them anyway, and it doesn't matter the attitude, they just want to get paid at the end of the week. They can ask them for their pay. They pass the right and pay. The life isn't right. Worry about the wrong things. Talk about it. I was to, uh, to my third verse on fundamental two. Not forsaking the assembling of your of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but ex exhorting one another. So much the more as ye see the day approach. As we see these things happening in this world, there's no way we should be isolated in any single way. We should be coming together in community. I have so many, so many people, and, and, and even me too, I, I need to continue to realize that this life, we were not meant to do this alone. You know, Yah put Israel as a powerhouse. But Israel was Israel. They were together. They had community. You know, you don't see Joshua over there fighting alone. You didn't see him go, ah, in charge, and everybody's still back there. No, they all in charge. They all were. He didn't just have Joshua walk around for seven days. They all walked around for seven days, shouting, praising God, literally giving praises. So another thing, you want to know how you can get the victory in whatever situation, sickness, illness, disease. You, you don't know how to get the victory. You praise him through it all. You march around that illness, you march around that disease with the power that God gave us. Because you know what else it says? The scripture says that if uh, that these signs shall follow them that believe, one of the signs is you should be able to cast out devil, you should be able to lay, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So what's happened? What's happened to the 
church? How, how can we not see wheelchairs and crutches on these things on the wall like before? It's not that I has changed. He, he has never changed. He said that his, that his word never returns to him void. That means that his word will always see out what it has said it will do. Yahweh is not a man that he shall lie. That is another one. That's another scripture. We should be assembling and congregating as much as we can, especially these last days. You know what helps me a lot? What helps me a lot is uh, when, you know, when it comes to these desires that I have or just wanting to even go with them a lot and not love them in the world, see what it has to offer. You know what helps me? The community, the young men and, 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 the, uh, and, and the older brothers that I had around me. That's what helps me. The community that I had, that's what helps me not go out there because I could have went out there. But God, he decided, and he, he had mercy on me and grace upon me, and he decided to keep me. But what helped me, number one thing that helped me, is the community that was around me. Yeah. We were not made to be alone. He even said that in the scripture. God, no, it is not good that men should be alone. That's why, that, that is one reason why he gave us to you, and that's why, the reason why he gave us to help me. Yeah. It's, not, it's not profitable that we should be alone. Young men, we, we and young men and young women and everybody, you know, all, all, all the elders, we should all be constantly congregating as much as we can. Because this is how we fight the battle. We don't fight the battle alone. We don't, we, we, it's not just one person over here. No, we're all together. And this is what's so beautiful about when I see uh, familiar faces or faces that I haven't seen before come and congregate. Because this is, this is the importance. You know, we always talk about the church, the church this, the church that. But this is what the church is really supposed to be about. We are supposed to be yeah. coming together, congregating, encouraging each other. Yeah. Brother, well, brother, sister, what are you dealing with? What are some struggles that you're having? Allow me to pray for you. What can I pray for you for? This is what we're supposed to be about. We cannot come up here and, 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 and we can't preach and have a good time. We can't pray and, and clap our hands but not really be about it. Talk about but it. that's what in the end, the word, is, the word also says that all your words are going to be tried by the fire. So if I'm coming up here playing the piano with drums, what have you, and if I'm just going through the motions, and I'm, if I'm not really feeling it, no, God is not going to accept that. He's going to say, apart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. You can come up here and you can look how you want, or you can sit there and you can look how you want. You can be a bitch warm or a pew warm or what have you, and you can look however you want to look, but it starts in the hearts. Our hearts have to be right. Our hearts have to be right towards God. So this is a few things I'm going to talk about, a few attacks that are on us today. We must know the, um, the fight that we are in. So uh, these are some very disturbing images. Uh, the attack on life. Well, to the, to the right-hand corner, this is so sad. To the right-hand corner, you have... A guy that they recently put up, 2023, this is very recent, in New York. And it is a symbol of abortion. Yeah. Symbol of abortion. People actually voted for that to be put up. A large statue, a large statue, a large demonic statue, symbol of abortion. Because people have normalized the killing of unborn babies. The killing of life, the murdering of babies. Yeah. And someone has to have a voice, someone has to speak for them. Because if we don't, nobody will. Right. Nobody will. This is this is this is most of America going this way. Mm. Most of America going this way right now. The goddess of abortion. That's what you have. The demonic symbol. And I was reading one of the articles on one of the architects that decided to make this, and you know what happened? Just like a lot of things, uh, just like how a lot of people come up with different stuff, um, she had saw a dream, and that right there appeared in her dream, and she could, she could not get out of her mind. And this is one of the biggest abortion architects in our world today. This is what we're dealing with. This is why we must band together. We cannot fight this alone. Statue in New York, if anyone wants to look up and, and learn some more about it, that is a statue in New York. Um, to the middle, we have the Baphomet. Satanic symbol, uh, satanic demon, of course, uh, with two children looking up. And of course, we know that, uh, and this is also a symbol uh, of, of one of the base abortion corporations in the world. That's one of the pictures that they have on their website. 
They're not even hiding it anymore. It's, it, it's not like we have to search out, you know, like how we try to search out these celebrities. We find a celebrity that we think is nice and wholesome, and then you search out, and you look through the internet, and you go, oh, they put up the one I symbol. And we found out they're demonic. No, they are telling me we are demonic. Yep. This is what they do. This is they, the murdering of babies. This is what our world has come to. Just like in the Bible, how we have people sacrificing them. Even children of Israel, they started doing this at one point, sacrificing the children to Baal. This is the same thing. All they did is pretty it up for you. They, they made a nice little website on the internet, and they said, so you can come have a nice, safe termination of the fetus. See, that is one of the biggest things that the church took part in allowing is having medical terms for the life that God made. Hey, a baby needs no medical term. It's a baby. It's a baby in a month. It's a baby before it comes a baby, and it's a baby when it comes out. I don't care about a first trimester. I don't care about a second trimester. None of it. Because guess what? When, when some of these people, when, when they die, when, when they be their last breath, God's not going to go mission on first, second trimester. He's going to say, you murdered. You murdered my children. He allows, he allows uh, children in the womb. We have so many women who are barren, and then we have this. The murdering of babies. And then to, I can't really see from here either, so let me look at this. Um, to the bottom left, uh, we have an abortion clinic. We have the serpent. We have the satanic hex. Um, and then the, uh, the, the symbol for uh, health care. And that is a very, very large corporation as well. They are the ones actually um, that helped in this statue uh, to my right here. And uh, it's, it's no... It's no secret. They're not hiding it. This is the world that we live in today. And it's so sad because I try talking to a lot of young people. And most of them don't see it. And we are the future. We are the ones who are able to try to help stop this. But you know what? The scripture says that when we see these things, it's only the beginning of things. Yeah. You know, I, I know so many people trying to pray. Nah, can we just be somewhere and make it better? That is not to pray to pray. And who should have said, don't pray for the world. Do not pray for the world. You can pray for your loved ones. Don't pray for the world. Oh, I want the world to just go back to normal. You know, after COVID, we got a lot of it that's going to go back to normal. And now we see a new normal see uh, through different uh, policies and what have you, you know, just diff different, uh, different work scenarios. We see a new normal. But some people, this has flown over their head. See, while many people were uh, uh, thinking about getting back to normal, while many people were thinking about getting back to their jobs and what have you, this was happening. 2023, this was happening. This, uh, this, this corporation to my left, that was getting started up. This was happening as most of us who are supposed to have our eyes open, who are supposed to be praying and fasting, God says, watch and pray. The ones who are supposed to be watching and praying, looking forward to going back to work, and this is what's happening. Many laws have been passed as well. Many, many laws with abortion. We know that Roe v. has been overturned. That means absolutely nothing. That means nothing. Look at what has been put up in our faces. They're not hiding it either. The architect that uh, made the bottom right uh, structure, uh, all of them, they're all Satanists. They all proclaim to be Satanists. It's true. Just, uh, just look it up. It's easy. So look, New York, one of the newest statues in New York is abortion. The symbol of death, the symbol of murder. And this is just in our faces. They don't care anymore. This is this is next thing. Uh, the music. You know, the scripture says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But I know uh, but I know so many different people who, who think that this is going to slide and tell you no. There's no way you can be transformed by renewing your mind and you're listening to all these artists. Secular music needs to go. There, there is no in between. See, see, some some people think it's cute. Some people, you know, oh, I'm going to use this song in my wedding because they didn't say nothing about Satan or because this. No. You know what? We have so many talented uh, uh, musical, uh, uh, you know, uh, mistress, and, and, and we have so many um, uh, uh, people who know how to produce. On, on our end, we can make our own albums. That's it. Yeah. I will not, it's not going to be at my way. None, none of these songs, none of these artists, it's not going to be at my way. I don't care what nobody has to say. You don't like it, don't come. Simple. 
this will not be in any of our churches. And guess what? There's so many people who allow this kind of music to play, you know, after service. I see it all the time on YouTube, you know, service ends and I, okay, we're going to put on some, uh, we're going to put on some R&B, we're going to put on some Usher. As everybody walking, everybody walking out and they just got through the service. They have infiltrated the assemblies. Yeah. So many people, I know a lot of us have heard about it because a lot of us have watched a G. Craig movies and we know that when Michael Jackson died, everybody worshipped him in church. And whether we like it or not, the truth is, if you listen to anybody's song, and if it's not about God, and if you are just singing something, that's a form of worship. There's no other way to put it. There is no other way to put it. I don't care what no one has to say. That's a form of worship. When you go to these concerts, and when you raise your hands, that's a form of worship. When you, when you sing all the songs, that's a form of worship. And we're not to worship anybody but God. The Bible says that he is a jealous Elohim. He's, he only wants worship for him. And rightfully so. He made us. He put the breath in our lungs. No way any of this should be tolerated. Don't care what anybody has to say. I didn't come here to, uh, I didn't come here to, uh, to take many years. I didn't come here to, uh, so anybody can feel comfortable. This is supposed to make you uncomfortable. Especially if this is in your life. This is supposed to make you uncomfortable. Because God is not going to allow any of this in the shame I need. None of this is given to him. None of it. None of all this that you see right here. We have, uh, I'm not going to go over all of them. Uh, you obviously see the one with Beyonce. A lot of us have seen that. Where she's literally manifesting demons on stage. We see the one on the bottom right. The Alicia Keys where it's in Satan. There's a lot on her. We see the one on the uh, top left. Uh, he goes by the name of Lil Uzi Vert. If you say it slowly, it's Lucifer. There was a time in his life, uh, a couple of years ago, while all this COVID and everything's happening, where he thought it was cute to put a $17 million stone in his head. He actually got it put right here in the middle of his head. He did it. Um, so you ever have so much money to the game that stone? <laughs> but... This is the this is world we live in. Then we have on the other side, Sam Smith. Um, uh, uh, he used to make love songs or something like that. Yep. And uh, now he just went full satanic at the, at the 23, um, at the 2023 Grammys or something like that. I don't watch it. Um, 2023 Grammys went full satanic. Full satanic mode um, at the 2023 Grammys. We see that uh, he used to be just look like a regular heterosexual straight man. Yep. Now he's ah, uh, mm, he just twisted. Yep. I don't even use all that. Uh, he's supposed to be non-binary, whatever that is. Uh, I don't, I don't understand none of that. I don't understand male and female, and that's that's how God wired us. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, moving on to the attack on the family. Too much stuff. There's too much to say in this. I just hate this. I can't even can't even begin to start. Let's let's go ahead and read um, about this uh, this God that uh, homosexuality and and different things stream from and, and, and are in support of. This is ancient homosexuality is nothing new. We see it in Sodom and Gomorrah. We see it in all these different ancient cities uh, where they go out and and, and uh, they have literal uh, feast days where they where they all commit. I don't even want to say the word, but. You adults, you know what I'm talking about. This is real, and uh, this is happening in real time. And I'll show you how, uh, how even back in the day, you know, um, back in the in, in, in the um, ancient days, where the Greeks and, and different ones would go out in the in, in the streets and they would just commit these large festivals dedicated to perversion. And that's all I have to say, because like I said, you adults, you all know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you how they've done it today. Um, let's read about Apollo. Apollo, the god of sun and music, is considered a patron of same-sex love, as he had many male lovers and was often invoked to bless homosexual unions. He is also called the champion of male love by Andrew Kalimak. Um, what you see to the top right is a, uh, they call him a drag queen, um, uh, a man dressed as a woman reading to little kids in the classroom, reading to little kindergartners. They have infiltrated the schools. Um, I even heard of some here, like some recent, you know, and I, I used to be one of those. I just, uh, whenever I would hear things on the news, like mass murders and just different things like that, I'm like, oh, it's not in Fresno, so I ain't got to worry about 
know, this is here. Yeah. These are public schools here. They're trying to bring it here, right here. You can look up pictures of, of, uh, of schools and they're already allowing to, uh, for little children to identify as, as cats and dogs and stuff like that. It's, it's foolishness. And they're allowing kids to come and dress up how they want. And pretty soon, right here in front of them, if it happened already, I know we have a few educators in the room, um, but this will be happening here. Yes. Uh, now I understand more than ever uh, why, why it says in the Bible, woe well unto those who are with child. See, we just thought it was, oh, because they're going to be shooting up everybody. And, and, if, and, if you don't, and if you don't serve Satan, you're going to get the mark of the beast and all that. No, we have to think outside the box. We have to think further than that. We cannot stay shallow in this day. No, this is why. Because coming up, you are going to have to, you're going to, have to teach your children differently. I have to really pray if y'all ever, uh, if, if, if this world goes on enough and ever allows them to bring any child into this world. No, nah, it's just not just going to be, a, oh, we're, we're, we're going to name them this and they're going to go to this school. No, you have to know that you know that you know uh, what, you're, what the school that they're going to be attending is teaching right now something like homeschool. Yeah, because this is this is too much. <laughs> on the on the left side you see a drag queen show or a man dressed as a woman um, in children's school, age three years old, children, right age for this or this But anyway, they were around the age of three or four, just getting um, just getting uh, introduced to these type of things. And the uh, uh, the image is blurred out for a reason because the man does not have anything appropriate on. And this is in front of little kids, and uh, it, it gets worse. It gets worse. Yeah, this is not it. I I remember when I I didn't want to go. I didn't want to know how deep the rabbit hole really goes when it comes to this homosexuality stuff. I didn't want to know. I'm like, no, don't give me that pill. But now, as I'm coming of age, <laughs> we need to. We need to let everybody know that this needs to be exposed. Now we have the bottom right, where you see at the parade, and I don't know if y'all can see too well, but those straps that the men have on, they're not backpacks. They're not backpacks. That's, that is some, I don't even, nah, um, that's, that's some really horrible stuff that they're infiltrating um, upon the cities and the nations, but those are not backpacks. Those are uh, very inappropriate wear uh, that I would not get into up here. Um, and it says, Satan loves, and then it says on the other side, I couldn't put the whole thing up here, it says Satan loves you. And uh, also at that same parade, uh, you have men and women going around the streets with nothing on, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm telling the truth. This is what we've come to. So when we talk about, oh, you know, as in the days of Noah, you know, things are, things are going to get there. No, they're already there. They're worse. Because you know who else is present? People are bringing their children to these parades, and they are seeing grown men and women with everything out. This is our world. Children are having to see this. This is what's going on. Things are not going back to normal. This is the new normal. And if we do not accept this, then we are talked about. Then we are put down. This is the world we live in. And it is just what it is. There's nothing that we can do to make things go back. The only thing we can do is pray and, and pray for our loved ones. Pray that Yah will use us to bring everyone in that we can. Yeah. I do not know how long he's going to let this go on, but it says when you see these things, this is only the beginning of the end. For those who are looking to be, to be raptured out and just, oh, we're going to be taken and, and and we're, we're not going to have to endure when the Bible says, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. It's wrong. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. See, I, 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 I know uh, we all saw the soldier, the soldier at the top uh, at the top of the uh, the message. It'll take too long to go back to it. But that soldier looks strong in mind. That's how we're supposed to look. That's, that's how our mind is supposed to be trained. We cannot be in this shallow type of Christianity. We cannot stay in that way. We have to really be transformed. We have to yeah. make up our minds. We are going to serve God no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Even if he doesn't deliver us. Yeah. Even if he doesn't deliver us, we're going to serve God. Yeah. And here comes, still, greater is he. Yeah. The Bible says, greater is he that lives in me than he who is in the world. It does not matter what they throw at us. It doesn't matter what they try to do. I'll tell you what this is. This is a man 
um, David Lynn, some of us might have seen it on the internet, but he's baptizing while at uh, the LGBTQ, whatever it is, parade. And the protesters are spitting on him. They're, 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 uh, they're spraying different things on him and the one who, who wanted to be baptized. This man wanted to be delivered. This is how hard it's going to get in these trying times to try to get our friends in. If, if they're out there, if they're all the way out there, LGBTQ, guess what? They can still be saved. If they're out there and they've already gone to an abortion clinic, they can still be saved. No one is too far from Yah's hand. Yah can come and he can touch anybody. So yes, this is a man who wanted to be delivered, and he got delivered with, and, 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 and you see, they were attacked, and there were even police standing by, and, and, and they were all around them, and, and they couldn't stop them. There was too many. Those police would have got hurt if they would have tried to stand any closer, but they just stood to where they couldn't physically assault him, to, to where they couldn't physically punch or hit and beat on him, but they got spat on, they got sprayed, all these different things, just because the man wanted to be to, to be baptized. This is the word that we live in. They would not accept you. You know what Yahushua said? Yahushua said, if they hate me, they will hate you also. Okay, so all of these all of these preachers and all these churches where they're beloved and solidified and, solidified and, and all, it's, it's not God. That's not what this is because the word stays the same. His word never returns to him void. So if he hated, if they hated Yahushua, if they killed him, best believe they're going to be coming for us. But still, greater is he that is in us than he who is in the world. It doesn't matter what they draw us, it will always be greater. He is always going to be greater. See, this is what we have to train our minds to believe. We have to know that we know that we know he is greater. Right here we see a picture of, of, of the Hebrew boys, and then we see uh, that God came in the midst. And you know what they said? They said, even if he does not come and save us, that's, the, that, that's what we have to believe. This is how, see, this is real. I'm telling you, this is real. Real adults, you all know because you all grew up in a different time. And if I'm seeing this 2004 all the way to 2023, how much the world has changed, I know y'all have went through a lot more change than I have. So, you all, older ones, you know more than anybody that these are the times. These are not the times to play. This is not the time to come to church and, and be on the organ or the piano, or what have you, and not really feel it. And if you feel like that, you need to go talk to someone. You need to get help. You need to talk to someone about your struggles. If you're struggling with love, if you're struggling with pornography, if you're struggling with anything, if you're struggling with pride, if you're struggling with that lying, if you're struggling with a perverse spirit, it doesn't matter what you're struggling with. This is not the time to be in sin. This is not the time to be stained with sin. If anything, this is the time to get cleaned up. And guess what? We all have struggled. Okay? The Bible says all have sinned and I've fallen short of his glory. There is no one. There is no one who have not sinned. I'm standing here as, as, as a person who has sinned. But guess what? The Bible also says for sin, and it says in Romans, for sin shall not have dominion over you. So Guess what? So guess what, y'all? We can smile and we can continue to praise God because He's good. And guess what? Sin has no dominion over me. Okay? If I'm living a righteous and upright life, sin has no dominion over me. Go ahead and say it with me. Sin has no dominion over me. And why? You know why? Because greater is He who lives in me than He who is in the world. Okay? It does not matter. Forget the homosexuality. Forget all these different sins, okay? We don't have to look at the world and point a finger to them. We have to be on that straight and narrow path. It is not the time to judge. It's not the time to be judgmental. But it's time to get together and gather in community. We know what we must do. We know that we must watch and pray. We know that we must live righteous. We know that we must live holy and acceptable unto our God. Because if he lives inside of us, Guess what? The Bible says, if, if Yah be for us, who can be against us? And you know what? That's a question, but it's a question who will never, it's a question that will never get to be answered. You know why? Because they can't find anybody. I don't care if it's a man. And guess what? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and in high places, against principalities in high places. Well, guess what we can do? We can go ahead and bind and rebuke the principality. You know why? Because Paul said, I have this confidence. Okay, we have to have the confidence that Yahushua had. I'm over here and I'm speaking not by my authority, not because I wanted to be up here or speak because I haven't spoken in a while, but I'm coming up here because I know Yah had a word and it's not by my confidence, it's not by my might, it's not by my power, but it's by the power of Yah, it's by the power of the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. So we just have to be encouraged, saints. We have to be encouraged because no one, no man, no woman, no principality, no drag, no anybody, no one can 
to be against us. It doesn't matter. Okay, we are the ones. The Bible says we are the salt of the earth. We are the city on the hill. And we must be the ones to carry the covenant. We need to stay in covenant. We need to make sure we're following the commands and the statutes in the Bible. We need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can in this last day. Because trust me, it's coming. It's coming, and the world is going to be looking for anybody who is going to co-sign. I hear so many people, and, and I'm going to be off of this homosexuality thing, but it's just so big and prominent. They're pushing the churches. I hear so many people when, when, when we walk by or, or when I might meet somebody, ooh, they're cute, they're so cute. No. You know, I hear so many people say, well, you know, well, homosexuals, they're some of the nicest people. They'll be the nicest people in hell. I don't care. And guess what? It's a spirit of deception that's in there. And guess what? If you co-sign that spirit of deception, then you're going to be in the wrong. You know why some of these people are so nice? Because they want you to go ahead and co-sign and accept what they're doing. I will never co-sign and accept what they're doing. I have so many people, when I go through drive throughs and, 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 and I can tell they're crooked, I can tell they're off. When I go through drive throughs and different things, I just say, thank you for the food. I'm not going to harass nobody because then I'm going to be in the wrong. It doesn't matter what any sin, anybody said, I don't care if they're homosexual. I don't care if they lie, cheat still. It don't matter what any other sin anybody's in. If I go ahead and, 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 and the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. If I go ahead and if I push or smile, or, or if I push or, or fight them, or if I just show an attitude just because they're lying, Style, guess what? I believe y'all will get me. Because then I'm becoming a, a stumbling block. Don't you know that that some people of, of, of this lifestyle, of certain lifestyles, don't you know they can look at upon us and when they're just in a place where they're like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be homosexual anymore. I don't want to lie anymore. I don't want to fornicate anymore. Don't you know y'all can put us on their mind, the ones who just came through the drive through the ones who are the regulars who come there. And that's what he just put us on their mind. And next thing you know, he could, he could be like, you know, Go to that person. That person dealt with you with love. That person didn't agree with your lifestyle, but they dealt with you with love. It don't matter what lifestyle anybody has. We need to make sure that we are in the right. We cannot be in the wrong. We cannot be. We cannot be found in the wrong. So many people who are judging, just judging. You're not going with nobody judging nobody. You're not going with anybody that way. What we need to be is we have to present our lives as a living sacrifice. Yeah. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We are to be examples. Okay, yeah. we are the salt of the earth, the city yeah. on the hill. People are supposed to see our lights yeah. and they gravitate towards us. Yeah. If you are really living a life according to the scripture, they will see you and they will, yeah. you know what? What's, well, what's up with them? Why do they always smile? Why are they glowing? Well, why do they have this glow about them? How, how come they're always treating me like this? When I know they don't agree with my lifestyle, when I know they'll never come up to me and co-sign what I'm doing because I know what I'm doing is wrong. But how come I see these people? I can't, I can't get them off. I can't shake it. I can't shake it off. I've seen how people have come to me like that. Like, hey, I know you don't agree with me. I know we're not friends, but I can't shake you off my mind. That's the Holy. That, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Spirit who have put them, who have put you on their mind. And guess what? All we have to do is minister. All we have to do is come to love. Yeah, who should come to love? We have a perfect example when when it came to the woman, the woman who who who, who was fornication, the woman with, uh, who was deeply in fornication, who was a prostitute. Yah said, any man with the first stone, cast it. Go ahead, go ahead and throw. Go ahead and throw. I did. Go ahead and throw. Guess what? If anybody would have threw that stone, I'm telling you, they would have had. They they would have had it bad because they would have lied right there. Yeah, who's just right there? They would have lied right before him. Any man without sin cast the first stone. And what we need to do is realize that in that scripture, what he's saying is, I am the only one who who has the authority to judge. No one else had authority to judge. He showed us right there. He said, hey, I'm the only one who could throw this stone, and he didn't even throw it. That's why I love Yahusha. Because when I was in sin, he didn't throw the stone. When we were in sin, he didn't throw the stone. He never threw the stone at us. In fact, he, he loved us. He said, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. She didn't even ask for forgiveness. She was over here probably looking down with pity. She knew what she was doing was wrong. She already felt judged because everybody was about to kill her. Everybody was about to stone her. Because when, if we do that, if we go through life stoning everybody, then we don't have the opportunity. We don't, we don't, give, we don't give God an opportunity to come and change their life. There are people, y'all. I know so many people, and it's so sad because some of these people I've heard of have even died, and, and it's, it's too late. But for those of us who know and, and have this wisdom and knowledge, there are so many people who are in sin who Yah has a plan for them. 
He told Jeremiah before the foundations of the world, I had a plan for you. To prosper. Not to be with him. Yah has a plan for these people. These people that I showed on the screen, no hate, no judgment at all. Yes, they're in the wrong, but y'all can save every single one of them. Every single person at that parade, y'all can save them. Every single man or woman that was in sin, even if they were running around naked, y'all can save We cannot put a limit on y'all. We can't put a limit on his power. We need to allow him to work, okay? We need to allow him to work through us. I have to, I have to work on this because a lot of things I cannot stand. I'm not going to name it up here, but a lot of, a lot of sins, even though, even though I sin myself and I do ask for forgiveness, but it's sad because that's some hypocrisy right there. I'm glad I don't address it as such. But a lot of sins, I just look and I'm like, I cannot stand that. I can't stand that spirit. There are just certain spirits I cannot stand. I can't do it. But guess what? If I were to go in flesh and go in and condemn, then Yah doesn't get to, to, he doesn't get to change their life. Just like he changed that woman's life. That, that was a prostitute. Just like he changed her life. He could change a lot of people's lives. We just have to let him do it. Greater is he that is in us. We shouldn't feel threatened by anybody committing any sin. Because guess what? If you have to go and you condemn someone, that, that can be that can be because you feel threatened by them. So you feel like you have to say something uh, uh, rude or crude towards someone. But that is not how we win those souls. Yeah, who should tell us how to do it? Exactly going back to the CTs, exactly going back to why why we chose this day, or we didn't choose this day, why y'all chose this day. Okay, and why we still keep it. Yes, we can worship any day, but why why do we come here on the Shabbat? Because it's right here in the Word. Yes, because yeah. it's right there in the yeah. Word. How to deal with people. Okay, we have too many people who just go and, and, and we deal with everything lightly, you know. We don't think before we speak, we don't think before we go up to people. I don't know how many people, I've seen this a lot though. It is countless people who could have came to Yah, but they were condemned. Well countless people, but they were condemned and they never stepped foot. In any in, in, in assembly again. That is so sad. We gotta be careful. We gotta carry this blessing banner with with with, with some with some urgency. We can't deal with everybody certain ways. We have to ask God for wisdom. We have to ask God for wisdom, because greater is he that is in us. And if he is in you, then you know to ask for wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask for me and he'll give it. Simple. Just remember God, greater is he that is in us and he is in the world. We shouldn't feel threatened by anybody. We shouldn't condemn anybody. We should go with love. And whatever God gives us to say to a person, we say it. Even, you know, sometimes it, it, it could be a sharp rebuke. He rebuked with love. He, he rebuked Peter with love. But there's a certain way we have to deal with people in this time. We already know that if you are living uprightly, if you are living righteously, if you know that greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world, you, you already got it straight. Yes. But he said, go to the four corners of the earth, preach gospel to every creature. He said, let everybody know. Let everybody know. And I don't know about y'all, but I've gotten to a point where I cannot hold it in. I used to not even do this, but I, I was cutting hair yesterday. And I, I did, it was someone that, that I didn't even know. And I was cutting his hair for the first time, you know, just, just serving. And I just ended up telling him. I, I had to tell him. I had to tell him about, uh, about God, just about his love. And, and, and about the assembly, I'm like, hey, we're, we're not like we're not like most churches. Christian, Catholic, no, you don't have to put no label on it. It's not in the Bible, so don't. We, we ain't got to put a label on it. We are covenant keepers. We keep whatever is in the book. It's so plain and simple. It's so plain and simple. He's like, you know, yeah, I like that. And you know what? There was a little, the, the, like, I felt a little fearful at first. Like, he might not come to me again. I think I'm a little, you know, I'm cutting his hair, but you know. He, he paid me so I could cut his hair. He didn't pay me so I could minister to him. But it just got to a point, you know, I'm, I cannot keep this in. Hey, 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 hey. You know, I, I, I got something to tell you. You know, we, 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 we don't worship on, a, on a Sundays maybe together. But we come together whenever we can. And it's just a family, you know. We, we don't have to put this big label on it. But we're family who serve God. We just... We worship God in spirit and in truth as best we can. If, if, if there's something that we did not see in the book before, we didn't see it that way, but God's brought a new light, we, we just continue and we follow it. And we work as we go. That's what it's about. It's not about, you know, pride. And I've, I've been serving God for 20 years or how, however many years I've been serving this exact way, and I'm not ever changing that. No, God is opening doors. He, he, he is opening minds. He is giving us wisdom. That yeah. we could not see before. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah.
God is moving. And we have to stay on board. We got to stay on board. Greater is He that is in you. Thank you.